Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I thought, because it is final season, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about how I write my papers and what's like most successful for me and my steps to be most effective in writing papers. This semester, like most semesters, I did not have any actual final exams where I had to sit in the classroom with like a paper and a pencil, but instead I had a ton of papers that were due in their place. So I thought I'd share a little bit about what I do to make sure that writing papers is the least stressful time that it can be for me. So let's just get into it. Okay, so in this video, I'll talk a little bit about what I do before writing a paper, what I do during writing the paper, and a little bit about my editing process, um, as well as some miscellaneous tips throughout. So the first thing that I always, always, always do when writing a paper is making sure that I plan ahead. It's so cliche and I know literally everybody tells you to do it, but once you start doing it and you make a habit of it, it becomes so much easier. When I break it down and start planning, which I usually do within the first two to three days, I always try to set small, specific goals that are a lot easier to tackle. For example, my to-do list will literally say, find source one, annotate source one. First of all, who doesn't like being able to check things off your to-do list? But also breaking it down like that means that you can reward yourself for the tinier accomplishments. Like sometimes it's really hard to find articles to write your papers on. So it's nice to be able to be like, hey, like I found the four sources that this professor requires and now I'm gonna annotate them. I also set very specific dates and times, so I usually know what my schedule looks like and knowing that I can do things during work, I'll be able to say like, um, find and annotate source one by 10 a.m. on Monday. Um, the second thing that I always recommend is know where you work best. For me, that's different places for different subjects. Like for Spanish, I know that I cannot, um, tackle a Spanish essay anywhere except my desk. Like I have to be sitting on like a hard chair with my desk, like with my laptop on a hard surface. If I'm sitting on a couch, it doesn't work. If I'm sitting on my bed, it doesn't work. But for other topics, I know that I can do it sitting on the couch or sitting closer to the window. Um, and then along with knowing where you can work, it's like also knowing around who can you, around who, around who? around like what type of people you can work around. I know usually I like to be, I don't like going to the library because I know I like people watching and I will easily get distracted by someone unzipping their backpack. Um, so I try to stay away from doing work in the library unless I'm literally on a shift at the library and I, then I will do work there. But otherwise I try to stay like pretty isolated because I know that's just how I work best. But maybe for you, like sitting around people who are doing work makes you feel motivated. Just going along with the environment that you work best in, it's like your location, the people, and finally, the time of day. The time of day is so important. Um, I always kind of knew this, but I learned about it a little bit more in a science class I took this semester, and it is just so important to know when you are most productive. Like I know by the time like five o'clock rolls around, my brain is already starting to shut down. And by the time 8.30 hits, I know I'm not getting any more productive work done. So if I'm planning things out, I will always plan for it to be done earlier in the day rather than later in the day. But for you, I know tons of people are night owls. So plan your work and plan your day for this paper around what works best for you. So now actually getting into the writing part of the paper. Um, who knew that so much comes before writing the paper? And for me, actually writing the paper doesn't even begin with writing the paper. For me, writing the paper always begins with this very detailed, structured plan and outline that I always make for every single one of my papers, no matter what subject it's for. So when I write papers, I always try to write out nice, a nice little outline that's very detailed. Actually, I shouldn't even call it little. It's always huge. Like, if I'm planning on writing a six page paper, my outline will be six pages to eight pages. Um, I always, always recommend writing out an outline just because 
it's an easy way for me to jot down my ideas without having to worry about how it sounds, how it looks. It's just like getting all the ideas and connections put together on paper so you don't forget it, but being able to just refer back to it kind of like notes. So in my planning stage, I always use multiple different documents. I usually have one document that's for annotating my sources. Um, so I'll do like, I'll read source one and have a little notation page that goes along with it where I can pull quotes, where I can pull topics, and it's just writing it in order of whatever appears in that document. Then I go back to that annotated page, reread everything and start pulling out themes that I think are going to answer whatever the prompt is or whatever kind of paper I have. And then I tend to color code those themes. Okay, so it's a heavier topic, but I wrote a paper on the media responses to mass shootings. And so in order to pull out themes, I talked about agenda setting. So everything would be, everything pertaining to agenda setting across all 10 articles that I read would be blue. Then I also talked about narcissism. And so across the 10 articles, whatever was referring to narcissism was green and so on and so forth. So that way I could, when I scrolled through the document, easily see what connected with what. Here comes another document. I start a second document where I will organize it by theme. And so then I will usually use split screen and I have the document with the annotated notes on one side and my new document on the other side. And so then I write, I start color code, taking those color codes and pulling them together. So all the blues will go together, all the greens go together. And this is where that plan for my essay starts coming in. And as I pull together all the blues, I start switching the color codes. Um, and this part sometimes gets a little confusing because now I'm like using so many colors, but ultimately in the end, it just like makes so much more sense for me. So as I pull together all the things on narcissism, now I'm changing the colors to match each document. Three out of the 10 articles that I read talk about narcissism. So in my little chunk of planning on narcissism, I should have three different colors depending on what article I'm referencing. So that way when I when it comes time to actually writing the paper, it's so much easier for me to cite things and knowing where it came from. So at this point, after I've planned out everything, thoroughly color coded, I start putting together my actual paper. And usually this has happened like three or four days after I've planned. I've dedicated about two or three days to finding sources, annotating sources, planning out my document and pulling together the themes. Then on about day four of writing this paper, I'm actually pulling together my paper. So I usually just write just like everyone else. I get stumped with words. I get stumped with what I'm trying to say. And for me, what works best is just to like keep going. I like put a little blank where I don't know what I was talking about. And then I will just keep writing my sentence, keep going, and I'll go back and leave a little comment. So I don't even know what tip I'm on anymore because I just started talking and I think I was counting in the beginning and now I'm not. But another thing, another tool that I really like using when I write my papers is Zotero. So Zotero ultimately helps me collect my sources and then organize citation information and my bibliography. And so that's always really, really helpful because I am no pro in any type of citation, MLA, APA, like I need so much help when it comes to that. So I absolutely love working with Zotero. It's got a little Chrome plugin so that way when I'm on websites or I find articles that I like, I can just like bookmark them kind of for me to like reference later. I am addicted to my phone. It's really bad. So the other tip I have for writing my papers is to leave my phone in another part of the room or in another room in general. I always put my computer on do not disturb mode so that way like my little notifications don't pop up and I always make sure everything's full screen so I don't see any of the like notification like red bubbles popping up on my screen. Um, I just like do the best I can to minimize distractions. Then another aspect of writing my papers is taking breaks. Like granted that sounds like it goes against everything that I'm trying to tell you to do. But I think my brain just like, for me, I cannot go straight and write a paper and not like lose my mind. So after each, every couple paragraphs or at the end of a section or like a topic or a theme, whatever you break your papers down by, at the end of that, treat yourself to a break. 
um, it goes against taking breaks, taking time away from screens, but sometimes I motivate myself by taking 15 minute breaks or allowing myself to watch one YouTube video, which granted takes a lot of self control, but I will say like you are watching just this video, it's 12 minutes and after these 12 minutes you are sitting back down and writing your paper. It's just nice to be able to stop thinking about what I'm thinking, take a step away, breathe, come back and refocus. Finally, when it comes to editing and proofreading, I always try to find a buddy um, to proofread my paper. Sometimes it helps when it's someone who's not in the same field as what you're writing your paper on, just because a lot of the times like you want your paper to be understandable by someone, uh, some outsider. And then I'll just be like, hey, can you read this over really quickly? And sometimes they'll find grammatical errors or sometimes I use the wrong word and they're not so much checking for content, but they're checking for the small things that you always miss or the fact that it actually flows and it makes sense to someone who's not me. Then right before I actually submit, I try to read my paper out loud or try to like read it as if I was reading it out loud because then I would catch any last minute things where the flow of the sentence just doesn't seem right. And then finally, I hit submit. All right, so thank you guys for watching. Those are all my tips for helping me be the most effective and efficient paper writer that I can be. I would love to hear if you guys do anything differently. I am still growing, I'm still learning, um, and I would love to hear what your processes are. So feel free to comment those down below. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you would like to see more content like this. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.